Hello, good morning. So I am audible, visible. We will just begin in few minutes. <coughs> Helen, let me start. And... Okay. So we are going to talk about. Uh, this thing if uh, Dushthana houses lords and malefic planets uh, should be weak or strong in your chart okay there is a concept which is going on that uh, uh, if Dushthana lords are weak the planets which rule your Dushthana houses they are weak and if uh, malefic planets are weak in your chart then it is better for the person okay because the malefic energy is less so we will uh, we will deal with it uh, uh, if it is so or uh, if it it should be otherwise means planet should be strong so first of all understand let's understand what what are dushtana houses and what are malefic planets Dushtana houses are actually 6th house, 8th house and the 12th house of your horoscope. These are, they, they be, Dushtana means uh, something malefic, something uh, difficult to deal with. So when, uh, uh, why these houses are named as Dushtana houses is that uh, they, they represent such energies like 6th house is your uh, house of diseases, conflicts, disputes, litigation, debts, okay. So, uh, uh, kind of negative portfolio is given to the 6th house. So, that is why 6th uh, house is Dushthana house. Then, 8th uh, uh, house is the house of sudden events, accidents, emergencies. Uh, it is uh, also house of surgeries so that is why 8th house is uh, named as Dushtana house 12th house is the house of losses and expenses okay uh, it is also a house of uh, your uh, spirituality and all but it is basically house of losses whichever planet is in the 12th house understand that it is in the bucket of loss and if you want to uh, get uh, any better result out of that planet, you have to put the best effort. Okay. So, the reason why these houses, 6th house, 8th house and 12th house are named as Dushtana is because of the portfolio they represent. They represent mainly the malefic energy, the disturbing, uh, troublesome energy where we need to deal with uh, enemies or conflicts or litigation or diseases or sudden events, accidents, some losses, expenses and we don't want to deal with these things, right? Everyone wants a convenient and uh, uh, convenient and happy life. So we don't want to deal with these things. That's why they are named as Dushtana houses. They are, name, uh, they are uh, seen as uh, houses which bring some troubles and uh, problems in our life. Likewise, malefic planets. Malefic planets are... Uh, Sun, Mars, uh, Rahu, Ketu and Saturn. Okay, Saturn is the most malefic but uh, Sun, Mars, Rahu, Ketu are also uh, malefics. Uh, 
why they are malefics for is for the same reason because they bring some difficulties in our life they make us uh, work hard they make us uh, uh, work really hard on something and then then only they give results they don't give results easily okay so that is why uh, these are ma malefic planets and uh, uh, they are supposed to bring some uh, some situations which require us to work hard with perseverance so that we can get some uh, good result fine now the concept uh, which we are going to talk about is uh, going on that uh, if dushthana lords or malefic planets are weak in your chart then uh, it means that you will have lesser uh, conflicts lesser troubles lesser uh, uh, lesser uh, uh, problems in life like uh, if your sixth lord eighth lord and twelfth lord are weak then uh, it represents that person will have uh, lesser problems in life to deal with likewise if malefic planets are weak in your chart then also it shows someone have is having uh, uh, very less uh, troubles uh, to deal with in his life this is what uh, is going on uh, as i hear from people and from other astrologers so this is what going on is that uh, uh, these uh, malefic planets plus your dushthana lords should be weak in your chart somehow i disagree with this uh, and my reasons for disagreements are many fold uh, first reason is that every planet represent many things every planet represent truck load of things okay it, your sixth lord can also be your uh, first house lord like for uh, me as a scorpio ascendant or someone who is taurus ascendant first lord and sixth lord is the same planet now if sixth lord is weak that that also means my first lord is weak okay so that is uh, that is the first reason that uh, every planet rules uh, at least two houses if we leave aside uh, sun ket uh, sun and moon every other planet leaves uh, rules uh, at least two houses so if your your dushthana lord uh, uh, is weak that means one an, another house which can be a beneficial house that is also weak right if we go by this philosophy then every planet represent many things as i said every planet represent truck load of things so if that planet is weak then all the things represented by that planet is weak okay now those things can be good also can be bad also like um, let's say uh, let's take the example of mars mars represents your aggression anger uh, your uh, dominance your uh, uh, violence and all uh, is seen from mars it also represents uh, bloodshed okay accidents and surgeries can be seen from mars fine now mars is weak let's say in someone start mars is weak but mars also represents someone's ability to move around okay someone's ability to uh, for, of his movement if uh, they say that if mars is strong in chart the person will be on his own throughout life uh, he will never be dependent on anyone else okay so uh, and that's what we all want we uh, we don't want to be in situation of uh, being a bad ridden person right so if mars is weak so although it can uh, nullify the uh, nullify the malefic impacts of mars if at all okay i am not sure about that also but if at all it may nullify some negative impacts of mars but it will uh, it will uh, nullify or reduce the positive impacts of mars also okay it may make someone uh, like uh, dependent on others for some uh, some or the other reason okay maybe because of health issue or he, his own uh, ability to uh, work can be very less okay he can have fatigue issues he can have uh, lethargy and all maybe because of that okay so this is the thing where, which i want to say that every planet the your dushthana lord is not only your dushthana lord 
it is representing many things in your chart so if you want that planet to be weak that means you you want all other things ca should be weak in your chart right all your uh, uh, good bad all the things should be weak so this is where i differ in my opinion that uh, uh, dushtara lords or your malefic uh, malefic planet should be weak like uh, eighth house is, although it is house of accidents it is ho house of surgeries but it is also house of business benefits okay so uh, how much of business benefit someone is going to get some how much someone is going to earn in business can be seen from the eighth house now if eighth lot is weak that okay fine uh, 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 he may have some uh, benefits in escaping from accidents and all again it is not sure it depends upon your dasha and transits but it also means if the earth lord is weak that person may have very uh, may have a lack of sense of business okay he may not be aware that uh, how to uh, how to uh, uh, do his own business effectively okay so th this is also a thing now your earth lord is suppose venus venus being weak that means your relationship area uh, of life is weak okay it is impacting all your relationships so this is what i am trying to say is that one planet represents many things in your chart it is not only your uh, dushtana lord or it is not only your one malefic planet it is impacting many things in your life and that planet has to be strong given a choice i would uh, al always uh, uh, choose a chart which has all the planets in good dignity okay it doesn't matter which uh, whichever is the planet uh, what houses it rules all the planet should be in good dignity so that uh, there is a possibility of person putting his best efforts and getting some results out okay let's take another example let's suppose someone has uh, 12th house lord week okay 12th house is the house of uh, losses and expenses and you may say that okay fine if 12th lord is weak then that person can have lesser losses and expenses fine we will deal with it later everyone has expenses uh, in this world if you are earning something you will have expenses okay if you have money in your hand you will spend it okay that is another thing but uh, 12th house is also a house of your foreign lands okay you are traveling to foreign lands or possibility of foreign settlement which many people want in their in their life uh, it is also house of your spiritual evolution okay so if uh, 12th lord is weak your possibility of being in foreign lands is very less uh, your possibility of your spiritual evolution is very less okay so this is the main thing which i wanted to, it is also house of bad pleasures okay uh, so if 12th lord is weak persons uh, uh, persons desires in bad pleasures may not be completely satisfied so th this is what i uh, mean to say is that uh, uh, all the planets are representing many things and to uh, think that uh, your dushtana lord should be weak or uh, your malefic planet should be weak that means you want uh, other all the benefits from that planet should also be weak okay you are ready to let go of the benefits which that planet can give being um, being some uh, uh, being some uh, kendra lord also uh, or uh, or being some uh, trikon lord also like for capricorn ascendant mercury is your 6th lord and 9th lord right so now mercury rules your 6th house it rules one dushtana plus it rules one uh, one ninth uh, house which is the highest of dharma house now if you want your mercury to be weak and uh, if you want mercury to be debilitated that means you are losing the benefits of both the houses 6th house and the 9th uh, house okay it is not only 6th lord it is also 9th lord so you may be uh, having problems in your luck and fortune also right uh, let's uh, let's see through saturn best example is saturn okay 
Saturn is exalted in Libra, Saturn is debilitated in Aries. As I always say, Saturn is the most challenging planet. In any condition, it is challenging. When it is in wrong dignity, like when it is in Aries, Leo, uh, Aries, Cancer, Leo and Scorpio, in these four signs, it becomes uh, more challenging. Okay, uh, this is what we can see in dignity for Saturn, that where it is more challenging. It is challenging for everyone. In these signs, it is more challenging. Now, if Saturn is in Aries, okay, you cannot say that this person is not going to face a, any challenge in his, in his life. Okay, if you say that malefic planet should be weak in your chart. Uh, now, uh, Saturn is the most malefic planet and it is its weakest dignity is in, in, in Aries. Now you cannot say that this person is not going to face any challenge in his life. He will have bigger challenges. And that's what that's where the chart of uh, Helen Keller is very important, which I have quoted here. Uh, she was a Scorpio ascendant with Saturn in the sixth house Aries. Okay. And sixth lord is also debilitated in, ca in Cancer, Mars. Okay. So you cannot get... Uh, a weaker sixth house than what she had okay saturn was debilitated in the sixth house sixth lord is also debilitated so you cannot have weaker sixth house in, um, than her chart now sixth house is illness and diseases and uh, what she faced throughout life is illness and diseases she was totally dependent upon her uh, teacher uh, i I am uh, forgetting her name. Maybe Annie Sullivan's. Uh, I am not sure about the name of the teacher. But she was totally dependent on others throughout life. Although she achieved, uh, achieved uh, uh, great things in her life. But that achievement came because of the support of other people. She was not on her own. She could not be on her own. Uh, she has the, such type of uh, long term ailments. Uh, it is uh, it is absurd to even hope that she can be on uh, her own. Okay. So what is happening? Saturn is debilitated. Okay. Uh, Mars is debilitated. Dushtana Lord is debilitated. Still she had uh, had to face the troubles. Still she had to face the problems in her life. That means this philosophy is not working. That if your uh, your Dushtana Lords are debilitated or or your malefic planets are debilitated then you, you would have to face lesser troubles in life. This philosophy is not working, at least in Helen Keller's chart. Okay? Where, where Saturn is debilitated, Mars is debilitated, and the Sixth Lord is debilitated. By this philosophy, she should not have any illness, any trouble in her life. But she had lifelong illnesses. That means uh, this philosophy is not working, at least in one chart. Okay, I can quote uh, 10 more charts like this. Okay, but uh, we can say that uh, 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 that uh, this theory is not working and uh, there has to be something uh, else in the rule. Now, as I said that uh, given a choice, if you give me a choice, I will always choose a chart with uh, all the planets in good dignity. Because what happens when planets are in good dignity, at least that person has the courage to fight out. Okay. If Mars is exalted, that person will have courage, willpower, is a strong, a strong immune system like uh, if he is Aries and a Scorpio ascendant, Mars exalted shows a strong immune system. Okay. Ability to fight against the adversaries. Okay. So and that is uh, that is uh, what, what is necessary to live this life because you will face uh, conflicts in life you will face some adversaries you will have to deal with them okay you can't just escape every time right so uh, uh, mars being exalted can help you in uh, in dealing with those things even with saturn if saturn is like in uh, libra or in uh, capricorn or aquarius it is much better to have uh, Saturn in good dignity rather than in bad dignity. Because understand one more thing. All these planets also represent uh, some of your body parts. Saturn represents your uh, bones. Okay. 
Saturn in Aries people may have uh, lots of problems related with bones, teeth and uh, the the overall body, the physique. Okay. Now what is happening that uh, you uh, someone has Saturn and debilitated. Now his overall body is weak. His bones can be weak. His teeth can be weak. Now uh, that person will not be able to put the best of effort. Okay. Even uh, even uh, in his daily uh, daily work life, in even in his career or uh, in family life, he will not be able to put the best efforts because his Saturn is weak. His body is weak. Right. So this is what I am trying to say. It is always better to have uh, planets in good dignity. That's where the possibility is there that okay, fine, a planet is in good dignity. Person will have uh, a strong immune system. He will have uh, good uh, uh, good strength to deal with uh, with his enemies uh, and uh, conflicts, and he will be able to overcome it. Okay. This is also one of the logic given that uh, if your sixth lord is uh, sixth lord is weak, then your enemies are weak. Uh, I don't go by that. The, the enemies uh, will have their own chart. They are not dependent upon your chart to fight against you. Okay, uh, they will have their own chart, and uh, uh, their strength can be seen from their chart. Okay. So sixth Lord weak. Uh, I would understand that person has a weak immune system, weak strength to deal with his enemies, conflicts, and uh, uh, and illnesses, which should not be there. Okay, because in this life you will have to face many things, many challenges, and your your uh, body should be strong enough to deal with it. Okay. So this is what I feel that. Uh, because every planet represents many things, every house represents many things, every house lord represents many things. It is always good to have uh, planets in good dignity so that uh, we can get benefits for, of those other things also. It, uh, it is not that uh, sixth house only represents your illnesses. Sixth house represents many things. Okay. Sixth house represents good things also. It is your daily work life. Right. If sixth house is weak, that then person can have no idea about what daily work life he should follow. Okay, As eighth house, uh, like I said, it is a business benefit. It is inheritance. It is uh, your uh, marriage benefits. So if eighth lord is weak, then uh, all these benefits will also be gone, right? If twelfth uh, house, uh, the spiritual evolution, person may, uh, will not have uh, uh, correct spiritual views. He may follow uh, fake gurus, conmans throughout life because he doesn't have sense of spirituality, right? He may, uh, so this is uh, this is what is important that uh, every planet should be strong. Ideally, means I, I understand that uh, it is very hard to find a chart with every planet is strong. But ideally, I am giving the uh, ideal scenario. Uh, actually, I have seen some charts where uh, most of the planets are in uh, are in extraordinary placement dignities. Uh, so, uh, ideally, uh, uh, your most of the planets or all, all the planets should be in very good dignity, which shows uh, person has capability to fight, to uh, capability to. Uh, deal with the problems of life okay this this is what i feel let's see if there are some questions how to find out whether the planets in dushtana houses are strong or weak so dushtana it, it just uh, means dignity of the planet like uh, i said in uh, helen keller's chart like Saturn is in Aries in the 6th house. So Saturn is uh, in uh, uh, debilitated sign. So it is weak. If uh, same Saturn had been in Libra, if she had been a uh, Taurus ascendant person, then it would represent uh, uh, Saturn exalted, which is a strong Saturn. Then she would have uh, ability to deal with her conflicts on her own. Okay, she won't have been dependent on other people. Okay. So this is uh, 
uh, it is about dignity now, the planets uh, in in a particular house they are in friendly sign or uh, in enemy sign or own sign or exaltation debilitation hello for pisces ascendant venus rules third and uh, eighth house venus placed in ascendant which is retro due to venus ruling eighth house the shah of uh, venus is bad or good uh, everything is an addition in astrology you have to understand this basic rule of astrology is that everything is an addition you will have good and bad both results okay life is gray just like my hairs so life is gray uh, so uh, nothing is completely black nothing is completely white you will have uh, good uh, good times and bad times both in life now pisces ascendant venus ruling the uh, third and the eighth house first of all the uh, both the uh, first of all the planet is benefic okay the natural benefic planet venus even in its worst dignity venus is supposed to give you some benefits okay even if uh, venus is in virgo and it is deeply debilitated at 27 degree even then it is supposed to give you some benefits okay because it is naturally benefic planet now uh, in your uh, in this case uh, uh, venus is in pisces is in the first house it is exalted first house is the most important house so it shows that most of the result can be benefic in nature now uh, understand the dynamics of these two houses third house efforts eighth house uh, transformation third house is also eighth from the eighth so it is bhav bhavam of eighth house so what uh, what it means is that uh, you are going to get the best benefits during this dasha if you are uh, receptive and uh, receptive towards the changes of life this dasha can bring many changes in your life in this person's life he can get best benefits only if he is uh, receptive towards the change if he is changing himself with the change if he is flowing with the change if he is trying to resist the change which we normally do as a human being it is our nature to resist the changes of life if we uh, uh, if this person is uh, trying to resist the change then he will be in difficulty but if he is ready to and receptive towards the change that is the most crucial thing of this venus dasha if he is ready and receptive towards the change then uh, then he will sail through now what type of change so third house is business eighth house is business benefits first house is self so venus is uh, uh, directly indicating towards a life path which can be about business benefits he should be in his own business now if he is not ready to uh, change himself okay now if he is not ready to change uh, from job setup to business setup then he will face troubles because you are not doing something which your planet is indicating okay you are not obeying the orders of your planet so in the end planets are going to win you are not going to win so this person can feel lots of frustration that i am not getting the best of the result i am not getting this or that this is because you are not doing anything related with venus position okay you can get uh, venus related results exalted venus results only when you are uh, doing something uh, with related with venus in first house pisces so this is the uh, advice to this person that he should be uh, ready and receptive towards all the changes in life which may come from time to time during this venus dasha if he is receptive if he is flowing with the changes then he will sail through and he will be benefiting okay what if uh, any dushthana lord is conjunct malefic like saturn which is again uh, in bad dignity like for scorpio ascendant venus and uh, saturn closely conjunct in leo 10th house okay my daughter has it in uh, magha nakshatra with ketu and rahu in shatatara 
is such type of conjunction is called good if it is in uh, sixth eighth or twelfth just a second what if any dushthana lord is conjunct uh, malefic like saturn uh, which is again in bad dignity Scorpio for Scorpio ascendant uh, neither Venus uh, Venus is the stone lord right twelfth house twelfth lord uh, uh, is with Saturn in Leo sign that is tenth house uh, it firstly shows uh, some frustration in relationship delay in relationship okay uh, the this person should delay uh, should delay his marriage uh, till thirties uh, at least till the Saturn return is over okay. Because uh, what is happening that Saturn is uh, aspect uh, Saturn is with Venus. It is aspecting seventh house and twelfth house. Seventh house of uh, um, uh, seventh house of relationship. Twelfth house of bad pleasures. So uh, Saturn is uh, blocking the results of both the houses. Okay. Plus it is blocking the results of Venus. So relationship should be delayed. Otherwise uh, she may fa fall into wrong. Uh, 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 wrong type of relation stressful relationships okay this is the thing uh, now uh, if we are uh, going to take the dignity and um, the uh, dushthana effects of uh, venus venus is coming to the 10th house so uh, and it is with saturn saturn in the 10th house in enemy sign shows that uh, uh, she will have very less benefits uh, while working under other people in job setup. So uh, she should uh, uh, she should uh, uh, think about her business. Okay, if she uh, if she tries to create her business in job setup, then she will feel the loss of twelfth house in her career. She will feel that okay, I am putting the best efforts in my career, but I am getting the losses. Okay. But if she uh, 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 changes her attention, uh, shifts her focus towards business, then same Venus Saturn conjunction can be helpful in business and she can get uh, clients from foreign lands. Okay, so this is the thing. Every planet, uh, like I said, every planet, every house represent many things. So things can be positive if she is in business, things can be negative if she is in job setup. My daughter has it in Magha Nakshatra with Ketu and Rahu in Shatatara. I am not sure I know much about this Shatatara. Uh, is such type of conjunction is called good if it is in 6th, 8th, 12th. Uh, this Venus-Saturn conjunction, if you are asking Venus-Saturn conjunction is good in 6th, uh, 8th and 12th. Then again I will look for the dignity of the planets. Okay. Uh, what dignity they are in and because uh, if they are in good dignity then that again shows some strength in the person to deal with the malefic results of the these houses okay so just uh, comment uh, uh, regarding the second paragraph of your question uh, I am unable to understand it properly for Gemini ascendant is there a functional malefic uh, planet present or not if not then why Okay, functional malefic is when a planet rules your dushtana houses with a, uh, with its uh, mool trikon sign. So for, so for Gemini ascendant, none of dushtana houses are ruled by any planet's mool trikon sign. That is why Gemini ascendant doesn't have any uh, functional malefic planet. But it, it is still a, is uh, has a sixth lord, eighth lord, and twelfth lord, which are going to give the same results. Okay, it is not that uh, because uh, Gemini ascendant people don't have this um, functional malefic, then sixth house, eighth house, and twelfth house results won't come in their life. They will still come through sixth lord, eighth lord, and twelfth uh, lord or planets in these houses. For Aries ascendant, Mercury and Venus retro in twelfth house. Fine, great. Uh, now how we will interpret 6th Lord here debilitated or cancelled the debilitation again nothing cancels anything completely everything is in addition so 
देर इज ए नीच भंगराज योगा देर इज अ डेबिलिट कैंसिलेशन ऑफ डेबिलिटेशन एज मर्क्यूरी इज सिटिंग विद वीनस इन लैंग्वेज इट इज ओके अंडरस्टैंड इट लैंग्वेज एवरी लैंग्वेज हैज इट्स लिमिटेशन दे आर लिमिटेशन ऑफ लैंग्वेजेस सो दिस इज द कन्फ्यूजन विच इज कॉज बाय द लिमिटेशन ऑफ लैंग्वेज सो वी Mercury is debilitated. Its debilitation is getting cancelled due to Venus presence. But it is uh, uh, this uh, Nich Bhang Raj Yoga and many other yogas. Ninety nine percent of your yogas are going to help you in your person uh, professional life. They are not going to help you in personal life. So this person will have uh, difficulties in relationship. as sixth lord mercury is sitting with the karaka of relationship also the seventh lord they can have conflicts and uh, disputes in relationship but in uh, professional matters he can have gain, gain from the uh, from the foreign lands okay uh, jupiter is sixth ninth lord uh, cancer ascendant uh, even the vargottama uh, atma karaka okay uh, and good fortune it uh, give near death illness in its dasha i guess uh, it may be cause moon in its uh, nakshatra uh, purubhadra 8th house maybe i need to see the chart jupiter is 6th 9th lord and uh, its dasha Okay, so it uh, it safeguarded you, uh, if I may say so. Jupiter, uh, as I said, uh, any benefic planet is supposed to give some benefits. Even it in its worst dignity, at least it takes the role of safeguarding the person. Okay, uh, it safeguards the person from the uh, losses or uh, problems. So uh, when uh, Jupiter is ruling your uh, sixth and ninth house. uh jupiter's dasha was going on although you had pro problems health issues but uh, it safeguarded you okay in that dasha so uh, mainly because of uh, the whole dasha we need to see that uh, understand we cannot put uh, the responsibility or the credit on one planet that okay just because of moon here and there you uh, you got saved or uh, your uh, your jupiter was placed here uh, it got uh, you got saved or you got this benefit or that event happened nothing every planet plays its role uh, in uh, in giving you something or taking away from uh, you something okay so uh, we need to see the dashas of the, that time uh, especially uh, mahadasha and antardasha and we need to see the transits of that time then only we can say and if uh, you are uh, uh, you are cancer ascendant then jupiter is uh, not your marka lords okay marka lords for you are saturn and sun okay so uh, jupiter was not your marka lord so uh, the possibility of death in uh, during jupiter dasha was very less uh, you missed my question about what is the question no i covered it mercury being sixth lord in the in the 12th house with venus uh, it creates uh, this nich bhang raj yoga it gets that nich bhang raj yoga but uh, it will give uh, good results in professional life uh, challenging results in your personal life uh, she is uh, 12 years only okay uh only but uh, she is uh, enjoying every venus in pleasure uh, example given she is good dancer so uh, here venus is not called bad for her uh, i would like to have her full chart analysis from you once she is bit old fine no issues uh now understand that uh, mm, venus uh, venus represents uh, creativity and it is with saturn and it is also uh, ruling the 
ट्वेल्थ हाउस ऑफ फीट ओके इट इज ट्वेल्थ हाउस ऑल्सो रिप्रेजेंट्स योर फीट नाउ वीनस इज इन लियो साइन द साइन ऑफ क्रिएटिविटी सो इट इट ब्रिंग्स दैट क्रिएटिविटी फैक्टर इन हर लाइफ but uh, what i see i don't wish so but uh, what i see is that uh, to get recognition from her creativity she might have to put extra effort because of saturn's presence okay she might be a very good dancer my uh, good wishes are with her to achieve great things in uh, her creative pursuits but due to saturn's uh, presence with venus in 10th house of recognition so uh, to get recognition out of her creative pursuit she would have to put the best of effort over the longest period of time then only she will get some uh, some recognition out of her uh, creative pursuits thank you thanks sir you covered my first question here is another for aries ascendant mars sitting in aries uh now eighth lord uh, in mool tripon sign so eighth house impacts will be high or low uh it again uh, represents the same thing as i discussed earlier with venus uh, ruling the uh, the eighth house and sitting in the first house uh, as i said that uh, it will bring lots of changes eighth lord coming into the first house is always the case of person going through many changes in life okay now the person needs to be receptive of those changes uh, you, you will have problems you will have uh, stress only when you are trying to avoid those changes okay so this is the main thing with uh, with eighth lord coming into the first house person has to be receptive about changes whatever change it can be in your professional front it can be in personal front home front everywhere okay person just needs to be receptive a person just need to flow with the change then only he can uh, he can expect good results out of such positions of eighth lord in the first house uh, normal human nature is to resist the change so that's why we get into trouble so if this person is uh, ready to uh, change himself according to the changes happening in life then it is it is a good position okay so i think we are done let me know if there is any other question oh. next sunday is uh, deepavali i don't think we will have session let's see because uh, everyone will be busy on sunday right on the for preparation of deepavali so maybe after one more week when jupiter comes closer to uh, sagittarius we will have another session okay okay thank you thanks for listening take care happy diwali in advance bye enjoy your sunday